Are you ready for the word of God today? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts today. Let's ask God, God, give me a word today. Amen. He might not be able to preach, but God, you preach through him. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you speak to him through him, God, and let him give you a word today. Let him speak to your spirit today and your heart today. Because I know by, I don't know about you, but I need a word from God. Man don't live by bread alone, but every word, the word of God. It's by his word I'm living. It's by his word that I'm living day by day. Hallelujah. When my heart is broke, amen, it's his word that will give me hope. Because it's by his word that I'm living. Thank you, Jesus. We're just coming from Psalm 36 and 9. Amen. Psalm 36 and 9. If you got it, just turn there real quickly. Amen. That psalm has just stayed in my soul and my spirit all week long. Thank you, Jesus. 36 and 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. With thee is the fountain of life, and in your light we shall see light. Oh, God. And St. John 6, chapter in the 53rd verse, uh, Jesus was speaking to, he had got a, he was growing, church was growing. His 70 something disciples now with him. Church was growing, but you know what pastor do? We always say something that make people mad. We're always making people mad. We're always upsetting people. But he got to talking, and he started talking about that he's the bread of life. And then, and that only way you're going to live unless you eat his flesh. And the folks didn't understand it. Look what he said. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And with that, the church didn't understand, and people began to walk out. Because he said, my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He jumped at that 66th verse, and then he looked at Peter as the church was leaving, as the folks were leaving. He looked at Peter, and I like Peter. I like that big mouth, Peter. Amen. Peter, always, he's always got his foot in his mouth. He's always saying something. But I like Peter. So the Bible says that many from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. People leaving the church today. People dissatisfied with God today. Just because they walk out, I ain't walking out. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, mama can walk out. She want to, but yeah. bye, mama. Bye. I hate for you to go, but bye. Yeah. So they left. Friend. So you can't get in this thing on a, on a buddy system. Yeah. I didn't get into this on a buddy yeah. system. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Family leave, you leave because you got to follow your family. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Amen. When Friends leave. You got to leave because you 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 following your friend. That's a buddy system. From that time they went back, and then Jesus said unto his twelve, "Will you also go away?" Y'all talking about breaking pastors' heart. Amen. Don't you know that broke Jesus' heart? He's seeing these men leaving. People don't, don't like nobody turn their backs on them and walk away. Don't you think that broke Jesus' heart? But Jesus said, will you leave also? No. And then what Peter said. Peter put his 
He didn't put his foot in his mouth this time. He said good. He, he stood up. Amen. When other folks want to be silent, Peter would speak. And Peter answered and said, Lord, whom shall we go? Who are we going to go to? See, people are running to folks, but Peter said, who are we going to go to? Thou has the word of eternal life. Yes, God. Yes. Go back to the to the to the summons. It's saying, for with thee is the fountain of life. And in thy light we shall see light. Life is the Footprints of God. Life is. Where God goes, life and light is going to appear. Life is not a process. It's the finished product of God. Yes. When God said, amen, now your, ever, your books tell you, your evolutionist people, and they tell you, well, will you... In your progress, and the, the little frog or whatever came out of the, out of the sea took a billion or two, three, thirty-five billion years or so. But he swam out of the sea, and then he got a little legs, and, and another two or three, four hundred billion years, he got some, he grew some little arms. And but God said, "Let's make man in our image." He said, let's make the birds and let's make the bees. And he made them, and they were bees from the beginning. Amen. You might act like a monkey, but you're not a really, you really not a monkey. It was complete. It's a finished product. Life is. God has total authority over life because life comes from God. Whenever you're the owner of something, you control it. Amen? God controls life. All living things derive its origin from God. If it's alive, it came because of the goodness and the power of God. Amen. Woo. Amen. All living things come from God. Amen. 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 So a stream flow from a fountain. Amen. This thing that we call life flows out of God. You only became alive when you stepped into God. God present, amen, brings life. If the presence of God is not there, if the presence of God is absent, amen, there is no life. You talking about a dead church? If the church is dead, it's because there's no life in the church. There's no life of God in the people. So if you're part of it, then you must be, you gotta first start it yourself. That's right. Amen. Because life, amen, is God in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the word of God even say. St. John 5 and 26 say, as the Father has life in, in himself, so has he given a son to have life in himself. Look, go back to Genesis 1 again and 2. Genesis 1. First chapter 2, and said the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of, of the water. See, before God came, it was without form, and it was dark, and it was void. There was no life there. But when God, somebody say, when God. People, when God steps in, when God come into your life, yeah. when God come into the arena, yeah. when God come into the situation, yeah. amen, yeah. things going to change. Because yeah. 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 God brings something with him. Yeah. 
Amen. God brings life. There are two things God going to bring with him for sure. He going to bring life and he going to bring light. Amen. Because that's something we need. We need life and we need light. Amen. So when we see three things here. God, we see when God steps in, before he steps in, it was without form and it was dead. So when you and I... Before God came in our lives, amen, you and I was dead. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. This world, if they haven't accepted the Lord in their life, is dead. Amen. When God appears, life begins. Life starts happening. You only begin to live when you came into to Christ. Really, you did. You only begin, you only started to live when Christ came in your life. You can have, people can have all these things. They're trying to get all these things and, and, you know, to get life and get success and everything. And they still end up killing themselves. They still end up overdosing. Amen. Because there's no peace. What, 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 what did the man say, Rolling Stone said? I can't get no satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction. I try and I try and I try, try, try. I can't get me no. Amen. Well, that's how it is in the world. They are trying and they are trying and they are trying, 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 but they can't get me no. They go from woman to woman, man to man, car to car, house to house, boyfriend to boyfriend, from one thing to the next thing, and it don't fulfill them. Because there's no life in that. Amen. And the Lord said, I come to give you life. So when he bring life, then right, the first word that God said was, let there be light. Because we need light. We, in an hour, in a time when we need life, and we need light. Yes, You cannot have life without God. That with this world, my friend, you that listen to me, you cannot have life without God. It's impossible. And you can't find your way without delight. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Oh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to show it. Amen. He's the light, people. And you will not find your way without the light showing the pathway. And he told us, say, if we believe on, on, upon him, he said, I'll show you the way. John 1 and 9 say that was the that he was the true light which lighted every man that coming into the world. Turn there, John uh, 1 and, and 9. It tells us he's the true light that lighted every man that coming into the world. John came, John said, I'm not the light. People run to you and run to other people. I was listening to a documentary by David Corrett. They looking for folks to be the light, but and, and then these fools are saying, I am the light, but John said, I'm not the light. Y'all better come on now. Because you got a lot of preachers out there. You got a lot of cult leaders who will tell you that I am the light. You follow me. But John said, I am not the light. I come to testify of the light, but I'm not him. Amen. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm not the light. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. People, you get so caught up in people and personal and, and people that you begin to follow man instead of following God. Amen. Instead of following God, amen, you're falling out the denomination. Jesus, I am the true light. Yes. 
not the true light. So there's a lot of false lights out there. There are a lot of pathways that will, that will lead you astray, but you need a light to show you the way. This is, you need the light today, tonight. Today, you need the light. He came to the world, the Bible says he came to the world, and the world was made by him, and the world was, knew him, but the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. Because, see, if you don't have the light, you don't know. That's why you need light. Amen. Amen. So 1 John 1 and 3 said, all things were made by him. Oh, see, okay, let's go to 1 John 1 and 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Do y'all get, get that? Yeah. All you evolutionists? <laughs> all you science folk would trust science. You better not believe this science. This science is a false line. It's science. That's a lying science right there. I ain't taking it back. All things were made by him. Even today, you ought to have enough sense you know if anything that you pick up was made by somebody. Made by somebody. I ain't calling them names. Made by everything. But we get to this, we say, oh, uh, it was just big explosion. Yeah. 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 All things were made by him. Yeah. Without And without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. If God didn't make it, it ain't made. Right. <laughs> How about that? We got to get some boldness today. People, you got to get some courage today and call it what it is. Amen. Tell the devil what it is. No, God made this thing. And God is in control of it right now. It might seem to be out of control, but God is in control. God has even told us what's going to come to pass. If we ain't listening, Things not out of control. Thank you, Lord. Look at that fourth verse. In him was what? Life. What? Life. What? Life. Say what? Life. life. <laughs> and the life was the what? Life. Light of men. That's powerful in itself. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. He's illuminate us. He didn't want to give us the right perspective, the right outlook. He's the one that shows us the right way. In the fifth verse, in the light shining in darkness, and the darkness do what? Comprehend. Can't touch it. Yes. Darkness can't touch it. We, we play with those lights one time. We ain't gonna play with them tonight, but today, but you, 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 you flip the light switch off immediately, darkness come. Yeah. But amen. But you turn on the light, and what will darkness do? Flee. Amen. amen. That's why the Lord said the truth will. Make you free. Yes. You, the problem with us today, with this world today, they don't want truth. That's why they're walking in darkness. Because they don't want truth. Because if they got the truth, the truth will, will make darkness get back. Come on. Oh, I'm not made of a monkey. Amen. Oh, I know who I am. Amen. The truth will make you free. We have a culture and a side today that don't that want to do life without God. That's it. Amen. 
They want to do life without God, but yes. we just said there is no life without God. Yes. Oh, that ain't possible to do life without God. I guess that's why we like all these zombie movies. Walking dead, talking dead, the dead dead, living dead, soon to be dead. They by dead. I, I, it's all about death culture. You watch it. Watch, watch man. It's all about death because that's what he is, dead. We're in a topsy-turvy world right now. Yes, we are. Oh, I, I keep telling us right now, people, we have entered the time. We ain't in Kansas no more. People want a new world order. They want a new standard. They want new morals. They want new thoughts, and they want a new God. Yes, they do. They want to change and flip everything. Yeah. They want to flip the sweep, the, the strip. Yeah. Amen. But Romans 10 and 3 said, it say, for this, for they being ignorant of God, righteousness. That's what you're seeing moving today. This this wind that you see moving. Because they're ignorant of God righteousness. They don't want to get knowledge of God. They ignorant of God righteous, seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. So they're moving out what God said, and it's they're putting in what they said, yeah. what they believe. Watch, and you watch yourself. You watch yourself. Amen. Don't watch Sister, uh, Sister Mary. You watch yourself. Amen. Yeah. How you talking? Yeah. How, what you saying? Out of your lips, out of your heart, with utterance coming out of you, amen. You got to watch yourself. You got to do some self-examination. What is what is I'm thinking? What am I talking about? Amen. Well, I don't see it that no, you got to hold that role now. Amen. I don't believe no, you got to hold that thought. Amen. Because I told you, y'all don't believe, Pastor. But one day you're going to. Your, what you believe don't mean nothing. Y'all remember I had that chart one time, the will of God and the will of man? And, and we said that our will got to be lined up with God's will. God is not going to line up with your will. You got to line up with God's will. You got to line up with God's thought. And all your little stinking thinking got to be thrown away. Yeah, it got to be trash. Yeah. What, 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 what I believe is not what you believe. It, it's what he said. Yeah. You remember what Jesus said? Not my will. Yeah. That, that's what our Lord said. Yeah. He, and he was an example of, to us. He was saying, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So we got to cast our crowns and our thoughts and our opinion and our ideal down to him and line it up with him. Y'all yes, got that little children? Yes. Amen. Y'all you, you got that? Amen. Amen. So we got to check ourselves. Hallelujah. What will this, That's why we got to get in God's word. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. This word, this, this word here will give us the mind of God. Not reading all these books and magazines. Not looking at the news, amen. We got to get the mind of God. Okay. The book of Judges end on this note. In chapter 21 and 25, you don't have to go there. But it says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. That, that's where we're at today. Amen. We done threw God off the throne. We don't want him in our lives. We don't want, we don't want the word of God. We don't want the churches to preach the word of God. We, we want God we trust off of money, out of the courtrooms and out of the houses. Of, we, we don't want God nowhere. We don't want to see anything with crosses or symbols nowhere around. Uh-huh. We want to expel God. Yeah. All right. Amen. And it, 
If so everybody now is doing, that's why we're coming with these new morals now. That, that, that's, why, that's why we come with these new standards now. See, are y'all with me? Yes. Amen. Do you remember there was a more simpler time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember the days of Dudley Do-Right <laughs> and, and Snotless Whiplash? Yeah. I know these young people back there don't hear. Don't, y'all don't know about no Dudley Do-Right and Snotless Whiplash. You, do you remember the days with Popeye and Brutus? Yeah. They was fighting over that, that fine-looking woman named Olive Oil. <laughs> Always fighting over Olive Oil. Yeah. You remember those old westerns? Yeah. You had the good guy and the bad guy. Yeah. You knew a man who was good and who was bad right off the bat. Right. You knew what was right and what was wrong right at the front, you knew what was right and what was wrong. But the day we're in a world when you can't hardly tell the good guy from the bad guy. Amen. You can't hardly tell who's the right and who's the wrong. Amen. They came together. And some of these shows even the good, the so supposed to be good guy really turns out to be the villain, and the villain seemed to be turning to be the good guy at the end. Mm -hmm. That leave y'all confused. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah 5 and 20, it said, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Listen, these organizations that, that, that you see popping up, the people that you see popping up and trying to lead, these causes that we see today, listen, listen, I'm warning you, listen. You got to look at every person. You got to look at every organization. You got to look at every cause. You got to look at it. You got to examine it. You got to inspect it. You got to dissect it. You got to pray on it and lay on it. Before you give a yes or no. Before you say I support it or I don't support it. Because why? Because the deception of this hour is great. Yes, sir. We're in the hour of great deception. Yes, I pray, I pray, and this is one thing I pray, Lord, don't let me be deceived. Amen. Open my eyes that I, can, that I can see and I can discern. Because one issue they might be on, you say, man, I agree with that wholly, totally, completely. Mm -hmm. Then you turn around the next issue, you say, man, I, I, I oppose this. No, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. You got to look at them. Yeah. One issue they, they say, well, yeah, I, I agree with this. Then right flip around is something that is against your, uh, uh, what everything what God said. You just can't give yourself wholly to anything now. That's right. I ain't scared of you this morning. But see, we're not, we can't walk by sight any longer. We can't walk by feeling any longer. We can't walk by emotions any longer. We can't walk by these things. Because if we're walking by these things, these things are going to fail us, and they're going to get us in trouble. Yeah. The Lord told us that the believers, we got to walk by faith. We got to walk, we got to be led of the Spirit. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to send another comforter. I'm going to send a God. I'm going to send a paraclete. You know what the paraclete is? He's somebody that's going to counsel you, somebody that's going to sit beside you, somebody that's going to instruct you and help you. Yeah. And that's what we're needing today. We need in the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, then dwelling of the, pre of the presence of God, of the Spirit of God in us to guide us and direct us, tell us which way to go, what, what to vote for, who not to vote for, who to believe on, who not to believe in. Every time no men of God, and that was David and Joshua and all of them, when, when, when they decided to do something, but they didn't include God in it. They made big errors. Yeah. Yes, they did. And I know we did it. 
We ain't got time to pray on that. We, 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 we don't have time to seek God. Oh, this is a good one, man. I know that. I, you know, these guys came to Joshua far off. They got guys grow beards, and they put dust. They throw some dust on, on, their, on, on their bodies, and they got molded bread, and they said, well, Joshua, we came from a long way off, man. Make covenant with us that you won't attack us. And Joshua, oh, I don't need that. I see the, I see them. They all stinky. They all got long beards and everything. They smell it. The camels, all that. Okay, okay, I'll make covenant. And the guys were next door. See, we do that all the time. We we get the thing. We don't need God. We don't need God help. We can make that decision. Lord, I don't need your help on this one. I I know she looked too good. Hair too long. You're too good, amen. I know she's good. And God said, no, boy, you need to be praying on him or on her. Amen. You need to pray on that car before you buy it. It'll be the nice-looking car, but it's the ragless car on the lot, though. I remember years ago, I bought this guy. I work in a body shop. This guy brought in one of those, that one no boom boxes was, uh, was, was popular, no big boom boxes. He came in with that boom box and that was playing and it had all these, all these knobs and all these things, gadgets on it and everything. And he said, for ten, well, $15 he want to sell it to me for. And I bought that thing and I, I tell you, when, when that man walked off the parking lot, that thing died. I don't know how that happened. It was playing all loud and everything when he was in my presence. But when that man walked out off that parking lot, that thing died. I had to go, I wouldn't borrow money for that. I didn't have $15. I wouldn't borrow money from the boss for that money, for that boom box. Every time when we don't in, ask God for help and direction, you're going to make up, you're going to mess up. In 2 Chronicles 18 chapter, amen, this king Jehoshaphat, y'all remember Jehoshaphat? He was a good king, amen, of, of Judah. But you know what? He had a cousin, amen, King Ahab, which was of Israel, amen. He went and made a pact with Ahab because, see, that was kinfolks. You got to watch making deal with kinfolks. I don't, I, don't, I don't need God help on that. That's kinfolks. But listen, he almost lost his life messing around with kinfolk. Amen. We got to ask God help. He's to acknowledge him in all our ways. Didn't he say that? And he will what? Direct our path. But we don't acknowledge him in everything. You need to ask the Lord what hairdresser to go through. <laughs> Bring all your hair off. <laughs> Y'all know that's true. <laughs> See, we're, we're not, we're, we're not, God is not, we're not bothering God because we're asking God for the, the thing that you say might seem to be small and, and, and that, that's not bothering God. It's not a him in all our ways. Everything. He said pray for everything. Over everything. But see, but we too busy and we think we can handle it by ourselves. See, Satan has muddied the waters so much. And he has brought about so much confusion because he's the author of confusion. He has muddled things up so, so bad now that you know people don't even, can't even tell you whether they male or female now. That's how bad he done messed things up. People can't tell you what's right and wrong anymore. That's how bad he messed things up. So, and that's why the, over in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, he said, This know that in the last day, perilous times shall come. And that's where we end. We're in some dangerous times right now. We're in some troubled times right now. And you don't need life, and you don't need the light of God to guide you and direct you. Matter of fact, about so much stuff is coming upon men that their hearts begin to fail them. 
they, men's going to just begin to fall out, out under the pressure. Yeah. Heart attacks yeah. out from the pressure. That, that's why that's why they said uh, the liquor store was essential. So shut the church down, but they left the liquor stores open. Because these folk need some drink. That, that's why they legalize all these drugs, because these folk need some drugs, amen, to just to stay, just stay afloat. Suicide, mm -hmm. depression. Yes. Oh, we are some troubled times, people. Yes, that's right, because these are the last days, and we need the light, and we need the life of God. Yes. Because, see, oh, I just came to, that life of God is a sustaining life. Yes. It's a sustaining power. Yes. I told you God is in the business of sustaining, amen, yes. and not explaining. God will sustain us. They say, you go down in the fire. He said, you won't be burnt because I'm a sustainer. Amen. That's why Jesus said, amen, you can hang on this cross if you want to, but you can't kill me because you can't kill life. Nuts. Do y'all know that? You can't kill life. Bear me, me if you want to after three days. I'm coming up because I said three days. I'm going to give you three days. But even with that, he went down to hell and was preaching amen in those days. Yeah. He was, so he was always busy. Yeah. You can't stop. Listen, the devil cannot stop you when you got the life of Christ in you. And that's why he's always trying to deceive you, telling you that I can, but he's a liar. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Oh, God. You are unstoppable. Listen. Listen. This life, he's the fountain of life. That's why we got to keep on drinking from him. That's why you don't have got to keep on drinking. You, 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 get a, you get a little thirsty, keep on drinking. Yes. Feel a little weak, keep on drinking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Papa always went back to his spinach. Yes. He, he knew if I can get back to my spinach, amen. Yes. Brutus is beating me, amen. The enemy is it destroying me if I can just get back to my spinach. Yes. Amen. Because he knew there was power in the spinach. Yes. Don't you know there's power in the presence of God and your relationship with God? There's power in your relationship with God. That's why the enemy trying to separate you. Woo. My, 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 my. Amen. See, what they trying to live this life, they want life without Christ. And this, this is what you got to understand what the society is going through right now. But don't you be deceived. No. Thank you, Lord. Don't you fall in with them. Because right now you see the world and society, they, oh, they got it all now. They, the, the, they, they got it going downhill now. Yeah, they got this wagon going downhill. Everybody's flipping. Politicians are already flipped. Mayors are flipped. Yeah. Everybody flipped. Preachers are flipped. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but, see, but at first, in, in, Sam, I mean, in Psalm 1, it said, The kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands of something and cast away their cards from us. That's what we're going through right now. Yes. I don't want this religious mindset. I don't want no Jesus. I, no, no, don't lie, no stealing and all this. I don't want that. They write a song. It's my thing. Do what I want to do. You can't tell me either. 
Amen. Who to sock it to? Amen. No, that's what they said. If loving you is wrong, I, I don't want to be right. Turn out the light. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. This is what our culture is saying. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm going to preach. Amen. We ain't living a G-rated life. Amen. I ain't giving you a G-rated sermon. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, kids and all these kids know more about this than you do. You watch some of these shows, these folks doing threesome and foursome, little old kids. What they know about threesomes? Amen. Never had a threesome. <laughs> these folks, I'm talking about these 15, 16 year olds, they're all into this stuff. They tell you some things, mama, grandma. And, but, 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 but you want a, a, a PG sermon. Uh, not, not so, not so. Not so. I'm going to give it to you on your level. Amen. 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 Listen, I'm passing. I'm, I, I stepped off of that. Our society that reached this place where Paul was telling us over in Romans 11 chapter. If you want to read that, read over in the 11th chapter. Paul, Paul was saying that, see, we at the age of the Gentiles, and when the age of the Gentiles came, it came to the point the Jews was... Uh, well, became uh, disturbed with the Gentile. They became jealous of the Gentiles. But the, but the Bible tells us that when the age of the Gentiles is fulfilled, the Jews is going to return back to God. Amen. But the same thing that happened to the Jews has now, is now happening to the Gentiles. The Gentiles have begun to turn away from God. And their eyes is becoming blind. That's where we're at today. Read over it in Romans, yes. 11th chapter. It explains that to you. Yes. God is going to turn back to, the, to Israel, amen, and Israel is going to be saved. Amen. But right now, we, we're in the hour of the Gentile, but the hour of the Gentile is about to be over. That's us. Yes. Listen. Moses was having a dilemma with the folks in his camp. And all of them were sinning like they normally do. You know, when you get together and then everybody seeing where everybody doing it. Yeah. Moses went up to pray. And he left Aaron in charge. And they got to cutting up, yeah. dancing, Doing all kind of stuff. And they got, and they told Aaron to, to, to build and make us a bull. Because God is gone. He's dead. Moses and our leader is gone. And we ain't heard nothing from God nor Moses. So Aaron began to, to they start giving the jury, and they, he began to fashion this bull. And Moses came back down and said, Aaron, what is this you built? And Aaron said, well, the people didn't hear from you. Thought you were dead. Didn't hear from God. So we built this bull because this bull was a God where they come from. And Moses looked at that bull, walked around and said, Aaron, that's a lot of bull. <laughs> so so Aaron told him, hey, I, we, hey, we throwed all this jury in the, in the fire and it popped out. And that's what we got. And that's a lot of bull, Aaron. Listen, just because people are turning, don't you turn. Amen. Amen. Just because people are walking out of church, don't you walk out. And because people are giving up on God and talking about, I, I done turned to this faith. I'm a Buddhist now. I'm an atheist now. Don't you be, don't be stupid. You got to hold on to your faith, as I told you last week. You got to find where God is at in this whole in these whole matters. And that's what I'm asking you to do. And that's what I'm begging, I'm beseeching you to do. You find God in these matters and you hold on to God. 
Yeah. It's yeah. not on. Yeah. Amen. Moses asked the people, who's on the Lord's side? And the Levites said, we're on God's side. You got to find God's side in all of these issues and stay with God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you all something. When you find God where God is at, we, when God get when when they get through with you, ain't nobody gonna like you no way. He already told you you're in this world, but you're not of this world. The Democrats not gonna like you. The Republican not gonna like you. The Independents not like not gonna like you. And maybe your own mom and daddy and brother and sister might not like you when this thing get over. With you. So you got to stay with God. About what side you on? I'm on God's side. You got to find God's side in all of this stuff and stay on God's side. That's why I'm telling you, you got to be man enough and woman enough. Hey, I, hey, I'm on God's side. I, I'm, wherever God is at, I'm at. And people are not going to be pleased with you. I know I'm preaching this morning. Amen. I'm preaching better than you looking. Amen. Yes, I am. Amen. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I don't care what y'all say. Amen. This, this word, amen, will get you over if you hold on to it. Amen. Because I know what the enemy is trying to do to us. He's playing a game on us, people. And listen, in that second part, and, and we, we're going to be finishing in a minute. In the second part, it says, in our light, we shall see light. In your light, i got to see through your light, not my light. Your light, i got to see. If I'm looking through your light, I'm going to see correctly. But if I'm not looking through the light of the Lord, I'm going to see it wrong. I, I, I just tell you my, my, what, what my experience in salvation is that when I came to God and when I gave my life to the Lord, it was just like I walked into a new world. It was yeah. just that yes, pronoun. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing this. What? The birds sound different. Yeah. The bees sound different. Yeah. You know what? Look, I, I didn't want to kill nothing. Amen. An ant was on me. And I said, wait a minute. Uh, I'm about to squash you. But I was stepping over ants for a while. Till one got on it. You just, you remember that old song the old people say, uh, I looked in my hand and my hand was new. I looked down to my feet, my feet. It was just like that. Everything just looked new. When the Lord began to shine his light in your life, you see things differently. I saw God differently because yeah. I thought at first God was this old man. That's my picture of God. He's this old man that had a club or something. And every time something went wrong, he was hitting me over my head. He was mean. He was nasty. Mm -hmm. Then you hear all the preachers say, God took your mama. God took your son. God did this. Mm -hmm. The insurance company said, it was an act of God. Burned your house down. You hear all this stuff and after a while he said, God is a bad, he, I don't want nothing to do with God. But then when the light shined on me, like, like, like who, who sang both, when the light shined, it wasn't, it wasn't that way at all. I was all wrong in my uh, perception of God. I was all wrong. It was God was is a loving God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, God. I told you, Jesus never would have came to the world and died if the Father hadn't sent him. Yes, yes. The scripture say, God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. It was initiated by God. I had them all wrong. He went out there trying to cut my tires and, and put counsels and break my bones. It wasn't him. He was there. Matter of fact, it was up. He was there picking me up and yeah. healing me yeah. and carrying me. Yeah. 
had it all wrong. And see, that's why they, they, they that's why people cannot see that, see, until they come in and on the hill light. I stayed outside for a long time trying to figure this thing out, yeah. looking through the window. You can't figure this thing out looking through the window. Uh, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm studying on religion. I, I'm studying on this. You can't get it. You can go to seminaries if you want to, but you ain't going to get it that way. You have to come into Christ. Y'all don't hear me this morning. You have to come into him. You have to live in him. You have to suck with him. You got to let his life abide in you. Yeah. And then when you get in that area, then he begin to open up things to you. Yeah. He begin to enlighten you. Yes. Flood you with understanding. Yes. Flood you with wisdom. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I see now. Uh-huh. It wasn't God doing this. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people right now are mad at God. Yeah. They got the wrong perception of it. Yeah. Light. He said, in your light, we shall see light. Oh, I like that scripture. I've, I've been meditating on that. God, I got, I got to see it through your eyes. I got to see what's going on in this world through your eyes. Not what I see and what my eyes, because looks, what you see is deceiving. They, that, they, they've already figured that out in court. You know, talking about you got to have two witnesses. That's why the Bible says you got to have two or three witnesses, not just one witness, two or three witnesses. People say, well, oh, I saw him do it. Then they can be lying. There's somebody that look like me somewhere. I'm sorry, but they do. And we get mistaken identity all the time. People have been killed by mistaken identity. I was way down in Arkansas, Hot Spring, Arkansas, and a lady come and said, I know you. You my next door neighbor. You drive a great Ford truck. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, oh, wait a minute. I, now, if this man had raped her or did something, I would have been in Little Rock Hot Spring Jail somewhere right now, probably. Mistaken identity. Listen, I got to see through his light. Not what I see, but do what he's seeing. Because yeah. looks are deceiving. Yes, Y'all deceive me all the time. These women walk in here with a different wig on, and I'm saying, I don't know who I got here. <laughs> I told y'all, I said, hey, hey, go and check. I told them, go and check. We got a, we got a, a visitor over there in the room over there. And they come up, oh, boy, that's Sister Barbara. <laughs> Y'all fool me all the time. Yeah. Sister Jesse done fooled me a couple of times. Sister Linda fooled me. Who is this? <laughs> you can't go by what your eyes. You can't go by your feeling either. Amen. Y'all know that? Yeah. Feelings are, are deceiving. Yeah. You can you I tell you right now, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to close. But you know what? You can just set up right now and think about something sad and just just go to crying. Yeah. 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 I can show a scary movie. I can show a Dracula movie or something like that and you you know this just a movie? Yeah. <laughs> but that's how I feel and the emotions go. Yeah. You can't go by those things. In your life, we shall see light. We got to ask God, Lord, show me. Guide me. That's why he told us, you need the comforter. You need the Holy Spirit. You need my power in you so you can see so he can guide you through this darkness that you're in. Because yes, yes, we, we got to fly by as it's, it's the astronaut, I mean as the pilot, we got to fly by instruments now. Yeah. We got to fly by the word of God now and not by how feeling of what we see. Mm-hmm. Y'all, okay. Because that's where, that's, that's where we're at. And St. John 3 and 20 said, For everyone that do evil hateth the light, yes. neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. See, if you don't want to live for God, you'll never know this truth. And you'll never know the light. God, when, if, you, if you want to walk in evil and live mean and live nasty, the Lord's not going to try to 
you'll never understand him. You will never figure this thing out, this church thing out. That's why we have to abide in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then when we learn and abide, and when we re learn the rest, he began to reveal things to us. Yes, show us the way. Yes, show us. We, he'll show us people. Yes, show us pathways. Hey, don't, don't, don't deal with them. Y'all yes. believe that? I know that. Yes. Well, there was a man I was dealing with when I, I first came to the Lord, and I didn't have the scriptures under me as, as I do now. And I still need a lot of scriptures under me. And you, and you do too. But every time that man came to me, my head would just start pounding. And then when I step away from him, it'll go away. I walk back up to him, my head, so I was trying to keep me away from that man. I found out why he was trying to keep me, why, why he was keeping away, keep me away from him. See, you can't run with everybody. You can't associate with everybody. Amen. There are people who are, they're so persuasive in their speech. They, they're, they're worse men. They know how to talk. They know how to calm you. My brother-in-law is one of those people. Amen. He'll tell you, tell you about those bread, about bread. This is the best bread, and you want to run to it, and you want to. Uh, he'll, he'll butter that thing up so good. You, <laughs> he done fooled me so many times. Go to the restaurant. This is the best bread. I said, oh, Henry said, this is good bread. He's about, oh, man. This is the best ice cream, and he looks, he licks it, and looks so good. People are persuasive. <laughs> They're influenced. And you got to watch out. And so you need the spirit of God to help you from people that have that power of influence. Because they can lead you. They can lead you away from God. Now I'm telling you, I, I've told you this before. I, I'm not trying to hide it from you. Everybody trying to move you. Everybody is like a, a, a chess game, a checker game. Everybody trying to move you. When you're watching TV, why do they have Coca-Cola and, and all these ads on the TV? They're trying to move you. They're trying to get you up off, this, off your sofa and go make you run down to the store and get a Sprite, a Pepsi, or buy this or buy that. Everybody trying to move you. I'm trying to move you. I'm guilty. I'm trying to move you into the, in the ways of God. Yes. But there are some people trying to move you into a, the wrong way, yes. in a wrong place. And you got to be aware of that. Yes. It's all right to be moved as long as you're moved by the right person in the right way. As long as they move you in the right direction. Okay? Jesus said, I am the way. St. John 14 and 6. I am the way. The truth. Yes, not a truth. I heard Britain the Spirit, Britain the Spirit say her truth. And I know y'all said well, my truth. Jesus said I am the truth. Thank you. And the life. Yes, There's no life, as I said, apart from God. There's no life in this. There's no life in that. There's no life in Miller High Life. Ain't no life in Miller. <laughs> There's no life except in God. There's no man that come to the Father, and no man come to the Father but by me. Amen. So God has sent his spirit in, in this world to guide us through this darkness to give us light. Amen. Amen. You got to learn. You got to, if you, and even if you have been filled with the Spirit, you need to ask God to fill me. Yes. Amen. Amen. God, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Spirit so I can be led, so I can be guided, so I will know truth. Amen. 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 In our light, we should see light. As the source of light, and all light proceeds from him. So we shall be enabled to see light or see what is true 
only as we see it in Christ. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. 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 We're going to see it by looking. We're going to see the light by looking to Jesus. Yes, sir. We're going to see light by meditating on his way and on the character of Christ. That's why you got to look on him. Look on Christ. Yes. Not on man, but look on Christ, people. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. You got to have the right understanding of yourself. You isn't God. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't know everything. Amen. You are a sinner. Y'all got this? I know Amen. people don't like that. Amen. You got to know who you are. You, you've been created. You ain't the creator. Amen. I, I, I know these folks want to get you that, you know, you, 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 your inner self. You want to get in touch with your spirit, guys. We was, we, we was at a, a commencement exercise. The little girl talking about she was got in touch with her spirit guide. I think it was a, was a dolphin or something. Got a, a, a spirit guide. You know, no, people. Jesus is our light. People in some crazy stuff, I'm telling you. With crown. I used not believe in all that stuff when I was out there in the world. But now, oh yeah, that stuff is real. People, people they doing it working all in the church. You you think they doing signs and one about the power of God. They done went down to Louisiana, got them some dust. They've been sprinkling. Yes. Yeah. Y'all. Y'all cook me a cake if you want to. I'm going to pray over it. <laughs> Amen. And, um, and, and, the, and quote the word of God. No weapon form against me shall prosper. Amen. And eat it. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. You got to stand on God's word. You, you got to understand who you are, amen, and you got to learn to trust in him and not in yourself. Y'all yeah. with me? Because yeah. it's his light we're trusting in. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. So as we've been compassed with his light, he's going to guide us yes, and he's going to direct us. Yeah. He's going to give us the answer to all these great questions that we have. See, don't you have questions? Yes. Well, God got answers. Yes. Now, I'm not going to tell you he's going to tell you all of them, but he's going to tell you enough. Because yes. there's something the Lord said, hey, you just wait for now. Yes, sir. Right. See, I'm not worried about the little children over in Africa. Mm -hmm. Or the man that died without knowing Christ over in some parts of the world. I ain't worried about that. Why? Because I, I walk with God. He spoke to me enough to, tell, to let me know I'm just and I'm faithful. Yes, he's sir. true and he's righteous. So he's going to do what's right about all those little babies and all these people that died and all that. He, he's right. He's he going to do right. Yes, I put it in his hands. Yes. You know what? And that's what he told me when I had this prejudice in my life. He said, uh, he said, I'm going to deal with these people. You, that's why you say you got to trust in him. He said, I'm going to deal with them. And I got to put all of those people in the hands of God. Yes. Y'all with me? Because if you don't, what you're going to do, you're going to be locking up, storing up, and fighting back. And cussing and doing what they're doing. And the Lord said, when I come back, I'm going to judge in righteousness. So he told me. Now, I'm just telling what he told me now. I'm just letting y'all in on, on my conversation with the Lord. He said, I'm going to get them, and I'm going to get you too. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what he told me. Yeah. If I don't let that stuff go, you get it out, get it out of my heart. Yeah. So I leave all of that to him. Yeah. God going to deal with these people. All this yeah. racism, all this uh, injustice, all this old meanness people have done, he going to deal with it. Yes, he when he comes, yes. 
Now, that's the light that I'm seeing light with. That, that's why I can sit back and say, okay, God will deal with it. He ever did, did with it in a couple of hundred years. He'll deal with it. He's long-suffering, he's patient, yes. but he's going to deal with it. Yes, Aren't can. you glad that the Lord didn't deal with you in, in your sin? Aren't you glad that he was waiting, he was patient with you and me? I'm glad the Lord didn't come back in, in, in 62 or whatever. Amen. He would have caught me. Huh? Wouldn't he, he would have caught you too? Yeah. Don't you, aren't you glad he waited, yeah. was patient with you yeah. while you were smoking and, and, and shooting up and doping up and all? Aren't you glad he just waited on yeah, you God. and gave Thank time you. until yes, you came around and repented? Yeah. And he's doing the same thing with everybody. He's yeah. giving them time. Yeah. He told your Jezebel, he said, I gave her time to repent. Yeah. He's yeah. giving you space. He's giving mankind because why? He's just. Yes. Yes. Thank God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So Thank let's you. leave it. Leave it into the hands of God. That's the light that you got to see the light with. Yes. And a, a whole lot of other things. People have done you wrong. You want to get back with them. I know how you feel. Yeah. I keep telling you. There was time when I I got my keys in my gun closet. Sometimes you want to go and get it. Don't you? I'm trying to be honest with you. Don't you? You want to go and get it and you, I, I'll take care of you. But my forgive, I, I'm going to forgive you all right. Come on, is that, is that just me? Come on. I, I, thank God I got some real folks in the church today. Honest folks. Amen. Don't you feel that way? Hey, you, you do it. You deal with them. You feel like cussing them out and calling them everything but a child of God because they because they they have they have they thinking that you don't forgot how to curse. Yeah. Yeah. And some of y'all just put y'all knife down, didn't you? Some of y'all just put that knife down, and now they're gonna make you run back and get it. And they know you, and you know you can cut, don't you? And just said, Lord, I'm just trying to be saved. <laughs> Aren't you? You just hold on to God where God, I'm just trying to be saved. I want to be saved. Help me, Lord. I want to be saved. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Because see, it's his light you're looking at light. Because if he wasn't there to show you the way, you would have went and got your gun, got your knife. You would have did something, wouldn't you? You would have been down in TDC right now today, wouldn't you? Come on, tell the truth. You'll you, you be down, if not in TDC, you'll be down in that uh, Evergreen, uh, whatever that place down there. You know, locked up, straight jacket. Wouldn't you? But you saw the light. He said, he, be patient. Be patient. I'll hold you. I'll hold you. I'll keep you. You feel like you're going to fall apart. He said, but I'll hold you. I'll keep you. Amen. Your, your weeping might endure for a night, but he said, joy going to come in the morning. Amen. And you wake up. Amen. And it's a fresh anointing. That's a fresh vision. That's a new hope on you. He sprinkled it on you last night as you were sleeping. Amen. He bathed you last night and gave you some new hope, new strength. Don't give up and don't give in. Amen. Look to the light. Keep on looking to the light. Amen. It's not looking to yourself. It's not looking to any human teaching. Amen. It's not searching for information uh, away from Christ. Amen. It's looking directly unto him, the author and the finisher of your faith. And with that, peace out. Amen. Come on now. Amen.